I was really kind of fascinated when you, when you brought this up. And I think it's a really important conversation that we need to have, you know, more in education. And I think, I think all of us, when we're talking about this, you know, having a conversation before, I, I think a lot of times we want everything just black and white, like it's either good or bad. Right. And my conversation all the time is no, we just got to be in the gray. It's all gray and we got to get in there. And one of the things you, I know that you talk about in this book is a focus on digital wellness. And I'll start with you, Tim, on this. Like what, when you say digital wellness, what does that, what does that mean? And what does that look like in a classroom? Sure. Well, and, and, and you're right, you know, you know rules and, and uh, structures are black and white, but life is lived in the gray. And so how do we allow the exploration of the gray? And uh, that, cause that, that's where the magic happens, right? When we talk about digital wellness, it's really about, you know, human wellness, student wellness, school wellness, and, and yet there's there's some digital components mm -hmm. to it, right? A lot of times it's, you know, people will look at at technology and say, there's, uh, what is the screen time that you have in your school? Okay, well, I mean, does that really matter? A lot right. of people will say, well, you've got, that there's too much screen time, or we need to have lids down. I think that what we've seen over the, the 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 last few years, especially, is that that there's a focus on the the social emotional needs of students and and staff, and how does technology play that role, and is it causing more harm than good? Mm -hmm. Again, I don't think technology is evil or or is the cause of the problem. It's the activities that we do, right? It's the the other things. But when we talk about digital wellness, it's really about are we working with students to help them understand the benefits of the use of technology. I mean, there's plenty of, you know, that's, again, going back to uh, carbon dating ourselves, George, when, when back in middle school, for example, if you had a, uh, an, an issue with a friend, there's usually a cooling off period. Like maybe you don't right. call them at night or you don't see them until tomorrow. Whereas now there's so much 24 seven access, right? And I can say, well, you know, look at what George did. And then there could be 16 or, you know, likes to that. And then you get upset about it. So it's, it's teaching kids to be good citizens, but the technology, you know, may or may not be the vehicle for that. It's really about finding that life balance, but not blaming technology for all the things that go wrong in a school and having schools say, well, you know what, we're just going to go um, without technology for a while. How does that help? It's much like we talk about uh, schools being one to one. Well, let's face it: most of our students and staff are two or three to one. They have a phone and an iPad and their oh. school device, right. right? So it's not about shutting things off. It's about finding that life balance, but not life balance based on technology. It's about life balance, and then how do you incorporate your technology? So the, actually, the I think it was the American Pediatric Association uh, years ago basically said you shouldn't have screen time for a certain age. And, and then the, they changed the, the, um, the guidelines or the suggestions. Right. And basically I've had this conversation, so I'll, you know, do a keynote and an event and we'll, we'll start talking about this after the fact. And I'll say to someone, how much screen time have you had today? And they'll say, well, actually you haven't been on my phone all the time. I'm like, but do you see the screen behind me that you've been watching while I've been showing slides? Right. And so. Now here's actually, I want you to think about this differently. So you are, let's say you're on your phone for 15 minutes, but you are seeing the slides I'm sharing for an hour. So were you on the screen? Like where did you have screen time for an hour or is it an hour and 15 minutes, even though it was an hour. So like it, it's confusing. So the, 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 the American pediatric association, when they actually talked about this, the, this shift, and please don't quote me on this stuff. Cause this is like sure. two years ago that they, they, they brought this out, but I thought it was a really interesting conversation. You're basically saying screens are everywhere. So it doesn't matter the time as much as what you are doing when you are in front of a screen. So the analogy that I always use is let's say um, I'm busy and I'm, let's say I'm doing this podcast right now. And I'm like, okay, I just need my kids to be quiet. I could throw them on to Bluey, right? Mm -hmm. Or I can get them watching Peppa Pig and they won't, they won't move. Like I actually know the safest place they could be is Peppa Pig, right? And I, like I always joke, I know that my kids have watched too much Peppa Pig when they start developing a little bit of a British accent. Like that's like, now it's gone too far. <laughs> right. So that's, so do parents do that? Absolutely. Right. And anyone who's pretending they don't is lying to you. So now 
let's say my daughter and I are watching Sesame Street together and we're having conversations about what's being said there. It's the same amount of screen time, but is it, is it better? So it's not really the, and I think, I think that was a really important point that you brought up, Tim, is that it's not really about how much time you have in front of a screen is what does the time look like when you are utilizing a screen? And that that's, you know, that's cause, cause the reality screens are everywhere, right? You could right. be watching this on YouTube right now and like screen time. Like what if you're listening to this on a podcast right now, does that change things because you're not looking at a screen, you know, and are you really paying attention? Are you kind of walking? Are you doing other stuff? Is it playing in the background? All that stuff that's going on too. Um, the other thing that I think is really important is when we talk about this notion of, um, you know, balance and conversations. One of the things that I say to people when I'm speaking and I talk about my, my experience as a, you know, K-12 teacher, vice principal, principal, central office. And I make sure that they know that. And then we talk about it and then they'll say, oh, like kids are out of balance, out of whack. And I'll say, did it matter to you that I've taught? And they're like, yeah. And I said, okay, why? And they're, and most times they'll say, well, cause it gives you credibility. Like you've been in the classroom, you understand some of the struggles we're going through. And I said that, and that's why I intentionally shared that. So sometimes when adults are giving kids advice, they're giving them advice on how to use this stuff, never using it themselves. And so I'm like, so to the kids, when you're giving them advice, but they don't have, when you're out of balance, and Wilberson wrote a post about this years ago, they see you as out of balance because you don't use the technology and you don't have the credibility with that too. Mm -hmm. And like, even I, I'm sure, I don't know how much you, you, you two follow me, but you know, I've lost a ton of weight right. over the last few years. Mm -hmm. yep. And part of that is not looking at my phone first thing in the morning. Cause I would get sucked into the Twitter, TikTok black hole, but, and I would skip my workouts. Whereas I like, don't even touch my phone except for to play music in the morning, uh, for my workout. And, and I feel so much better, um, doing that, but I also use technology, right? Like, and I use it at the times I turn off all my notifications. So I think, you know, that's a really important conversation. And when we are having that conversation with students, do we have the credibility from our usage of it and saying, here are some of the pitfalls that I've experienced and here are some of the good things I've experienced. So, um, there is one question I want to ask, you know, I'll turn this over to you, Ryan. Um, I'm, I'm really cu curious about this because I'm sure there's overlap, right? But how does like, when you say to this successful middle school instructional technology, how is this like, what is the overlap between, Hey, any school could use this, but this is also how it's specifically geared towards middle school. Yeah, absolutely. Now I'm glad you asked that question because we, we feel like there definitely is some overlap. You know, we originally approach a topic from that middle school lens because what we wanted to marry the successful characteristics of a, of a middle school to technology practices. Uh, but within that conversation, uh, we think this work is applicable to elementary, to high school, and, and, and to any school. And, you know, some of the activities that we wrote within the book are applicable to, to, any, to any level. And, and we, we would say, just apply your high school filter, your elementary filter of what we know best of, of, of what works with that age level to your instructional plan. Um, you know, within, within the book, we talk about in, instructional technology and how we talk about instructional technology is the most important discussion of our time in education right now. And we, we firmly believe that uh, because technology touches all aspects of our life uh, inside and outside of the classroom. As soon as students are walking out the door, their phones in hand. So how we talk about technology as educators and as, as, as a school and as a system is, is so critically important. And I think that's, that, that is, is where we really kind of missed the mark. Uh, you know, you, you hit on, on, in the, on the last Part of the conversation and that oftentimes we don't reflect upon our own usage and, and we have an activity in there that hey if we're going to be good teachers of, of of technology use for our students boy we better take a step back and be reflective on how we are using it as well and what our practices look like uh it, you know I, I i said to a group one time like hey you know if, if you're saying put your phone in the cell phone jail and you know you're you're saying technology bad 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 you lost those kids like like they're gone like like they they think you're a dinosaur <laughs> and you, you know so think using those really choice words and being very deliberate about our our ways that that we connect with kids around technology 